Welcome to Cooking with Crazy Jacks. So today the first episode we're going to make a traditional sauce, a pasta sauce, what uh, has been started with my grandmother, maybe her grandmother or her mother, to my mother, my father, and now I gave my own twist to it. And all my friends are always saying, oh you can cook so good. So I thought let's make some videos and show the world how I cook. So, this is the first one, maybe it's a little bit crazy, but my name is Crazy Jax. My basic ingredients are some grinded meat, some pork belly, well, if you're um, Muslim or you don't like pork, you can use beef or chicken. You don't have to put it in, but something what I like to do and what my grandmother used to do is put in pork belly. Um, some carrots, onions, some celery, a little bit, just a little bit of celery, and I use two toes of um, garlic. If you don't like garlic, you don't have to do it, but it's a pers personal taste. A glass of wine, not to drink, but to cook. Some salt, some pepper, and what I like to use is some paprika powder. Not everybody uses it, and it's not necessary, but I like to use it a little bit. Then something uh, you cannot get everywhere, but some fennel seed. That's what we like to use in Sicily, fennel seed in the area where I come from and for my kids because they love it some peas so then um, here I'm in Holland so we don't have the good tomatoes what I found out what for me works the best is the Heinz tomato frito so I'm using this one for a base and some tomato paste so this will basically will this will be where I will start with so um, for my base, you can chop up the onions small, you can do it by hand, but I like to use a grinder. So let's toss everything in there. The, um, the potatoes will stay for the end because they will go in the sauce, I won't chop them up. So the carrot, celery and the garlic. So, I've grinded everything, now I'm going to put some salt and pepper on the grinded meat. And what I like is some paprika powder, not too much. Just enough. Turn it over. Wash my hands. And repeat the process on the other side. Mingle it so the meat has it everywhere. Wash the hands again. And I start to chop up a little bit of pork belly. So we begin with a nice pan and some olive oil, extra virgin. Just be rich with it, not too little, not too little, not too much. Let it get a little bit hot. And then we can start. So I start with the base, what I 
made with the grinder. Let's cook that a little bit. And again here I will put some salt, some pepper and some of my paprika powder. And if you are watching this, Vincenzo from Vincenzo's Plate, one of my favorite artists, well, my favorite cooks on YouTube and Facebook, you will say, no garlic, no paprika powder, but you come from another town where I come from. I come from Messina and well, the paprika powder maybe, I don't know if my grandmother used it, but my dad who, who owns an Italian restaurant, Sicilian restaurant, he told me I can always use a little bit of that. It's a little bit of a secret, or a little secret. So that's why I do it and it tastes good. Not too much, just a little. A little bit of salt. and pepper just stir it and then not too much a little bit of fennel seed fenkelzaad finocchio italiano so I add that also, not too much because it had a real strong taste, but well, we always use it. So at this point, it's about five to six minutes that is in, I will add my pork belly. So it can get a little bit brown. We'll just keep it mixing so it gets a slight color then I will add the grinded meat and then I will let it cook for several hours so as you can see the pork belly which is with the skin because that's how I love it is now getting a little bit of color and don't worry it doesn't have to be completely cooked here already because later you will boil the sauce for longer and it will get good in there so after I've done that I will put in the grinded meat and just to, sh to say it another time the pork belly is just my own flavor or well, our own flavor what I've been teached when I was younger it's getting hot, so I need something to take the pan. Uh, it's a personal taste, personal flavor. I think it's really good in it. And yeah, it gives a, a nice uh, flavor to the sauce. And my kids, me, everybody, my wife, we fight for it. Who gets the, the pork belly. So let's cook that and already we add a little bit of white wine. Oh, was not too nice how I did it, but half glass. And make sure that everything gets cooked. So when the redness is off the meats, then it's time to pour in the tomato sauce. So now five to ten minutes later, the meat all has got a nice grey color, so it's not more pink. We can add the tomato sauce. What I said, I like to use fresh bottled tomato sauce, but here in Holland we just don't have it, so I use Heinz. And that one has the best taste for me, what I've found till now. When it's empty, 
don't throw it away because you need later to add a little bit of water and get the rest. That's one. And I always make a lot because we, we eat more than one time from this. That's two. Oh, nice sound. And turn the stove down so it can cook slowly. What I will do with this ones. I will add a little bit of water in it, shake it, and put it in. That's one. Let's do. Stir it. And then we add the rest. You don't have to use everything, just how much you like it, your taste. later and now it's essential that we let it boil in my case I let it boil for one to two hours on a really low fire I keep it I keep it boiling with the lid on and just a little bit of open so the alcohol can vaporize through it and well, see you in a bit. So now it's boiling for about half an hour. I will throw in the potatoes to cook. Because now the alcohol has vaporized. And I add some tomato paste. use a whole one, a half one. Just taste your sauce how you think it's the best. So, if you think the sauce is a little bit too sour, you can always add a little bit of sugar, but it shouldn't be necessary because of the wine. You use a medium sweet wine, and then the sugar shouldn't be necessary of a full dry wine so yeah basically stir it every I don't know depends on your fire that it doesn't cook on the bottom of your pan so that's why I keep it on a low fire and let it cook for a while so it has been uh, boiling for yeah half an hour again probably now, add some, add some fresh basil because I love when it cooks with it. And be generous, and be generous. Stir it in, let it cook also, or boil with it. We'll give a little bit extra sweetness to the sauce. And in the end, they will shrink and you will not find them almost. And of course, 
don't forget for my children the peace. So then you have a real rich sauce, a real meal sauce. So this is uh, yeah, what we ate when I was small, and we get, go to our grandma. This is what we get on Sundays, or Saturdays, or Mondays, or Tuesdays. Every day she had pasta. So, yeah, uh, let's let's uh, keep it on the stove for another half hour, and it will be ready. So when you're about ready to eat, you uh, heat up a pan with water, in my case two, because in my household some people want spaghetti and some want rigatoni. Cook the water with some salt, put enough salt in it to your taste, wait till that it completely boils and then add in your spaghetti or your pasta, whatever you like to eat. Because with this sauce you can basically use anything. So now the water is boiling, give it a stir and drop in your pasta, in this case digatone, stir it a little bit so don't get stuck and don't mess like I did, but I always make a mess. So and check your packaging, how long it needs to, be, it needs to cook because you want al dente and normally you add the sauce uh, you add the pasta to the sauce but because I have a big pot of sauce I will add the sauce to the pasta but I keep the pasta wet so I don't dry them completely I leave them a little bit wet so I've rinsed out the pasta the pasta and the spaghetti I keep them a little bit wet as you can see so they're not completely dry so there's a little, little bit of water in there We add some sauce, stir it. Normally it's the other way around, you do the pasta in the sauce, but I always make so much so we can uh, put it in the fridge, the sauce, and eat it a couple of days later. Again. So that's one. The spaghetti. Also, a little bit more. You can serve it. So let me take a plate. A nice chunk of meat. A potato. A little bit of sauce. Some basil if you like. And some parmesan. So, this is the pasta. So thank you for watching my first video, yes it's clumsy, yes it's not professional quality, but well this is my first time I do this, uh, thank you for watching, tomorrow I'll be back, I will use the same sauce what I made today, and the pasta was left over and I'll boil some new one to make uh, pasta al forno, so pasta from the oven. So uh, thank you very much for watching from my man cave here upstairs, my gaming room, my music room, whatever you can call it. Um, well, and I hope my videos get better. Thank you.